ask yourself these questions right now. Do you want to be the next CEO? Do you want to be a millionaire, a billionaire? Or do you want to follow what just others do normally? In fact, are unrealistic goals really that unrealistic and impossible to achieve? Hmm. Let's find out in this video today. Hello everyone, I'm Shreeman. If you're new to this channel, comment down below who you are and join in on the journey with us as I help you find your structure for life. In this video, this special video, we are going to answer these big, big questions. We are going to find out who is Elon Musk and his great idea of first principles thinking and the tree analogy. Is innovation today possible? Let's find out. Who is Elon Musk? He is the billionaire CEO of three main companies, SpaceX, SolarCity, and Tesla. You can say he's really ambitious. He has set seemingly unrealistic goals for the future. Hear it for yourself. SpaceX, through SpaceX, he wants to colonize Mars by 2025. That's five years from now. To create electric cars to harness sustainable energy through Tesla and Solar City to harness the power of solar energy as renewable energy. Wait, you guessed it, how is this possible? First, we need to understand his way of thinking. So first principles thinking is nothing new, nothing like revolutionary. You've probably never heard of this thing. What is first principles thinking? It's basically a physics lens of view of the world. In one sentence, First principles thinking is not reasoning by analogy, but boiling it down to the fundamental truths and working your way up. And with that, Elon Musk has accomplished some really unrealistic goals, like launching the Falcon Heavy as shown in this video. is that both of his reusable rocket boosters landed on the ground. That is amazing. So instead of reasoning by analogy, looking at Steve Jobs doing this, looking at Bill Gates doing this, looking at successful people doing it, you are boiling it down to the fundamental truths. So let me give an example. What is an essay? If in, in school you have heard of writing essays for English, for, for subjects that even if you like it or don't like it, you have to write an essay. An essay? It's a collection of paragraphs. A paragraph contains lines. Lines contain words, and words contain letters. Okay, so that's an example of boiling it down to the truths, to the alphabets. Or if you're thinking of a car, what does a car contain? It contains an engine, it contains windows, it contains frame, it contains brake systems, it contains different things. So basically, first principles thinking involves you breaking things into parts. And then find a way to piece them together, like what you do during an essay. You create a fundamental definition of something, like a car is to transport you from city A to city B. And these definitions should be free of social restraints, like a car should look like this, that's aerodynamic. The rockets should look like this, things should look like this. These are analogies. That is what defines this thinking. This thinking is unique, you don't reason by analogy. It's boiling down to the fundamental thoughts. And then, from the fundamental definition, you branch out. Think of huge brands that sell products. You could take Panasonic earphones, you could take Apple, or you could take any brand. The price doesn't come from the product, it's just the brand, okay? The brand that surrounds it. Like iPhone X is worth over $1,000. In fact, the product could be cheap if you break into what the phone is made of. It's manufacturing parts. That is how much few electric cars, its engine, its windows, and he broke up the manufacturing process and pieced them together and he created the product. Okay? See, even if the aerospace industry that he's interested in, he's interested in SpaceX, so despite the aerospace industry being really capital intensive, he's able to reduce the manufacturing costs and 
but file is business. Don't believe me, don't believe that it's it's not going to make things cheap. Check out the video by Nas Davy about a $1 microscope creating more affordable microscopes for people to view through. That cost $2,000. And for that amount of money, most people cannot afford to see the microscopic world. And that's where these guys come in to solve the tiny monster problem. Manu and Jim at Stanford University came up with a unique invention. They made a microscope that's 1,000 times cheaper. Well, if you're a student, you have to write essays and essays and yeah, you got it for school. So to do an essay well, it's just having an excellent arrangement of letters and just good organization, right? Yes, but no. All right, let's understand this example first. You have a mango tree. Okay, I mean, you saw a mango tree and what what comes to your mind when you see a mango tree? It's about a beautiful end product that you get. A mango. Yum. But that's just a shallow understanding of a tree. The mango, the fruit, is connected to a branch. The branch to the trunk. And what is the essential core? The roots. So to grow a tree, a new tree, it's not about the mango, the mango seeds. It's about providing the good roots. And for you to do it, like, from a farmer's perspective, he will need to have a good fertile soil, a good location, so that the roots are strong and you produce the good output. Now, apply this tree analogy to the concept of knowledge and the concept of innovation. Replace the trunk and the roots with knowledge and replace the branches with innovation. For example, let's take business. If, if you're creating a company or if you're joining a company, uh, the most important thing is to uh, is to attract great people. So either be with, join a group that's amazing that you really respect, or if, you, if you're building a company, you've got to gather great people. I mean, all a company is is a group of people that have gathered together to create a product or service. So that is the trunk. The business made up of a group of people working together to create a product or service. Then what are the branches? These are called innovation. So this could be research and development. This could be marketing, this could be promoting, this could be raising capital, etc, etc. I mean, if you, if you have started a business, you know about this. Your tree grows bigger with time, and so does your innovation. Wait, does it? Really? This is the problem. Let's look at a quote from the Elon Musk biography book by Ashley Vance. I think there are probably too many smart people pursuing internet stuff finance and law. That is part of the reason why we haven't seen as much innovation. If it's an untapped market, or then, then uh, you have more ability to... You, this, this, the standard is lower for your product or service, but if you're entering anything where there's an existing marketplace against large entrenched competitors, then your product or service needs to be much better than theirs. It can't be a little bit better because then you put yourself in the shoes of the consumer and they say, why would you buy it as a consumer? You're always going to buy the trusted brand unless there's a big difference. People lose direction when goals are too realistic and everyone does the same thing without knowing why and who you stand for. Here's a quote from the 4-Hour Work Week by Timothy Ferris. 99% of people in the world are convinced they are incapable of achieving great things, so they aim for the mediocre. The level of competition is thus fiercest for realistic goals, paradoxically making them the most time and energy consuming. If you want to be successful in life, you could be a student, you could be a college graduate, you want to create impact and show who you are to the world. You should start, like what I explained as a tree, you should start from the roots. Start a new tree, develop an industry. Define what you are rooted to. Your focus, your niche, what you like to do, what's your passion. These are the roots. Then grow the trunk, okay? So the trunk is the next part. The body of knowledge. The, learn from different sources, learn from people and gather the knowledge. Then the branches grow, then the branches follow and you innovate. 
and you become successful. You start a business, you become successful. Don't jump onto the branch of an already strong industry like engineering or law too quickly and find that you fell down as you reach the tree, as you get to reach the end. Now answer the questions I asked at the start of this video. As you do, click on the link above to find out the top 10 strategies of Elon Musk from Evan Kamikil's channel. Here's a sneak preview for you. One good friend of mine collected a whole series of videos of rockets blowing up and made me watch those. He just didn't want me to lose all my money. We're doing these things that uh, seem unlikely to succeed and we've been fortunate and at least thus far they have succeeded. If you want to look at more strategies, find out in that link in that video, it's for you. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends and remember the most important lesson. If you have unrealistic goals, but a strong structured approach and first principles thinking employed, and you have a strong passion for something, you will be unstoppable. Comment down what content you want more from this channel, My Structure for Life, and I'll see you guys on my next video.